bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, welcome. Uh, this is our uh, January uh, peer networking call for the Children's Healthy Weight Coin. And we will go around and do a quick round of introductions. So please, if you can, see the order in the um, attendee box here. If you can go down the list and tell us where, um, which state you're representing and your organization, that would be great. So I think I have uh, Cheryl Clark first. Cheryl, do you want to unmute your line and introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Cheryl Clark, and I'm um, the evaluator for Ashbin, and I work at AmpChip. Wonderful. Thank you, Cheryl. Christine? Um, yes, I'm Christine Sassy, the um, state breastfeeding coordinator with WIC in Arkansas, and I'm on, um, obviously, uh, not the lead, but I am uh, the Arkansas team. Welcome, Christine, and thank you for keeping WIC open even during the shutdown. Um, ah, yes, we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> Diane? Hi, this is Diane Bath from North Carolina Division of Public Health. I um, work here in the Children and Youth Branch, uh, and I am um, funded with uh, Title V funds, and I serve as our state breastfeeding coin and coordination team lead. Welcome, Diane. Jacob? Welcome. Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Davis. I work for Prevent Child Abuse North Dakota and I'm on the North Dakota Clinic. Welcome, Jacob. Jacqueline? Hello, I'm Jacqueline Bondi. I'm the State Breastfeeding Coordinator um, for the State of Nevada WIC program and I'm the State Breastfeeding Coin Team Lead. Wonderful. Welcome, Jacqueline. Katie? This is Katie Junkie. I'm with Bismarck Burley Public Health um, in Bismarck, North Dakota, so representing the North Dakota team. Thank you, Katie, for being here. Marcy? Hey, I'm Marcy Brewer. I'm the Breastfeeding Program Manager for the Bureau of Family Health, which is in the Louisiana Department of Health. Um, I'm also with the Louisiana Breastfeeding Coalition, and I'm the COIN um, team lead. Welcome, Marcy. Meredith? Meredith, your line might be muted. Sorry, can, can, you, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, hi, this is Meredith Morissette. I'm the project officer for the Children's Healthy Weight Coin here at the Maternal and Child Health Bureau at HRSA. Um, I'm also the project officer for the MCH Nutrition Training Program. Um, the Childhood Obesity Challenge and serve as the Childhood Obesity Lead for MCHB. Welcome, Meredith. Robbie. Hello, I'm Robbie Gonzalez Down. I'm with the California Breastfeeding Coalition. Welcome, Robbie. Sandy. Hello, this is Sandy Perkins. Um, I'm with the Association of State Public Health Nutritionists, and I am the project manager for the Children's Healthy Weight Coin. So welcome, Sandy. Michaela? Hi, I'm Michaela Schlosser. I'm the maternal and child health nutritionist at the North Dakota Department of Health and with the North Dakota Coin team. Thanks for being here, Michaela. And Sean? Hello everyone, this is Sean Meyer. I'm an MCH nurse consultant with Wisconsin's DHS program. I'm also the MCH rep for Wisconsin Breastfeeding Coalition, as well as a member of the Wisconsin Native Breastfeeding Coalition and the team lead for our COIN project here in Wisconsin. Welcome, Sean, and our guest speaker, who I'll be in, uh, introducing shortly, but Tiana is here. So Tiana, did you want to say just a couple of mm -hmm. Words before we officially introduce you. 
<laughs> sure. Uh, good afternoon and good morning, depending on where you are. And Happy New Year. My name is Tiana Piles. I am the uh, a co uh, one of the co-founders of B Stars, which is breastfeeding sisters that are are receiving support. I am the director for the Tennessee State Breastfeeding Coalition and the treasurer for the for my local uh, Shelby County Breastfeeding Coalition, as well as the director of the Orange Mound Development Corporation. Um, I'm looking forward to, to talking with you all. Welcome. Um, is there anyone who's joined on the phone that um, we haven't heard from yet? Hi, this is Suzanne Haydu, and I'm with California Department of Public Health, Maternal Child, Adolescent Health. And um, I guess that's it, huh? Welcome, Suzanne. Wonderful. This is Stephanie. Go ahead. This is Stephanie Trustee from Iowa. Welcome, Stephanie. Anyone else? Okay. Well, welcome, everyone. It's good to have a, um, quite a few states um, represented today. So we have, a, we'll go quickly into, um, we have a few updates to share. I'm Kinkini Banerjee. I'm the Coalition Relations Director at USBC, and I serve on the Children's Healthy Weight um, COIN um, steering group, as well as uh, lead the uh, breastfeeding driver group. So, so glad to have you all with us for this uh, breastfeeding state team peer networking call. So, we usually start with um, the a few updates from USBC, if we have any to share with you. And then today, we are so honored to have a guest speaker who's going to talk to us uh, about her experiences. Uh, Tiana will share about how, uh, you know, they're from the cultural coalition to the county to the state, how, um, uh, you know, uh, the coordination and partnerships are really making a difference in Tennessee. Um, so lots to learn about community engagement from uh, Tiana's experiences and work in Tennessee. Um, and then we'd love to hear uh, from you all. So we'll do a quick round of uh, sharing from the state teams as well. Sound like a plan? Okay, so quick update. Um, as you all know, that the, uh, the Healthy People 2020 DHHS has um, um, has uh, launched a public comment period to seek feedback on the proposed objectives for Healthy People 2030. So uh, the previous iteration had eight objectives, and this proposal includes one breastfeeding objective on exclusive, exclusive breastfeeding at six months. So this is a very steep reduction from uh, the previous Healthy People 2020, which had um, eight different um, objectives and four sub-objectives. So um, USBC, along with our uh, public health partners, has been uh, collating some key messages to prep our uh, the, uh, the first food field uh, to, um, to share comments, to share your input. So this is something that we will be sharing this week. We've really been doing this in conjunction with our partners like Nature and the Carolina Global Breastfeeding uh, with um, our other uh, partners as well. So watch out for that. The deadline is June 17. So we have uh, a very short turnaround time. So tomorrow's weekly wire will have um, information on that. What the USBC has done is created this document, which is an overview document. So I've embedded a link um, to it in your resource guide so you can look at what they were before. And I wanted to know, are any of you at the state level or WIC level, are you all planning, have you all submitted comments already or planning to do it? Um, has anyone done anything with HP 2030 yet? This is Robbie with the California Breastfeeding Coalition, and we just started communicating, I guess it was last month, with some key stakeholders in the state in our planning to submit comments. We wanted to draft something that then the local breastfeeding coalitions could use, but if you have, um, if you're going to have those materials ready, then we'll just disseminate what you develop. 
Yes, we we'll, we already have some sample um, comments and things, so we know that. And some of our partners, like I know that the American Academy of Pediatrics is doing its own write up about um, having, you know, uh, 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 asking, urging that some more objectives be put back in. So we'll collate these things, and we should be have launching them by tomorrow um, or Monday at the earliest. So. Um, feel free to share those widely. Um, and if there are new ideas that folks have, we know that we are going to have some things about maternity care practice. We consider uh, adding there's the 12, the six month objectives, maybe having something specific um, on um, 12 months as well, as well as adding something on um, hospital maternity care practices. So we'll keep you posted on that. Next, uh, we are doing with the new Congress uh, that was sworn in today, we are doing a um, breastfeeding policy priority survey. So there's a survey that's out. The deadline for that is June 10, Jan 10th. So sorry if I've been saying June, it's January 10th uh, for the our breastfeeding survey that we are asking all of you what should be your policy priorities. So we want to really tap into what our network what our coalitions want us to be um, advocating for as well. Uh, we have the USBC virtual membership meeting on Jan 24th, and it's a great way to find out about what's happening um, uh, with the you know, national state of breastfeeding and also with our membership and the different projects that we are doing. So a good, uh, Again, sharing um, in the resource document that I share, you have a link to register for it. Please consider joining us. That would be great. Um, we just launched the call for proposals for the National Breastfeeding Co uh, Conference and Convening, which is going to be in June. We also will have a number of awards for this. We have a category for tribal trailblazers. We have a category for cultural change makers, this time a new category for folks who um, represent cultural coalitions. And we also have two leader, um, emerging leader awards. So please uh, share that. Uh, again, the info is in your resource document that I will show you in a minute. So uh, with that, I'm so thrilled today to uh, introduce Tiana Piles, who is our um, going to be our guest speaker today. So Tiana has been with uh, it, we've has been an incredible partner for USBC. Uh, she has been um, active in the in her community. She's been uh, one of uh, a community activist right from the beginning and um, was also uh, awarded the um, Emerging Leader Award at the last conference. Tiana um, was a co-founder, as she said, of the Memphis Bee Stars, which is a cultural group that does a lot of um, community engaging um, moms, dads, and communities uh, to support breastfeeding. She's active in her county coalition as well as the state coalition. So uh, this Tennessee is really an example of how you build that network right from the local to the state. So without any further ado, I'm going to invite Tiana to share a little bit about how um, uh, about your experiences in improving the landscape of breastfeeding support in Tennessee. So over to you, Tiana. Hello, thank you very much, Kinkini. And again, uh, thank you for this honor to present with you all today. Um, and these are great photos. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad there's something actually that you all could see, uh, some of the work that we've been doing. Um, bear with me, this is my first webinar. So it, so I told Kinkini earlier, I'm glad she's on the call with me because I'm a little nervous because I'm used to looking at my audience. But um, we're gonna get through this uh, with grace. So uh, thank you again. Um, so B Stars, we'll start there. I am located in Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, breastfeeding sisters that are receiving support started out of a need three years ago. 
So to give you all a little bit of great information for background, three years ago in 2015, well, three years ago as of 18, uh, uh, 2015, our breastfeeding rates, initiation breastfeeding rates uh, for uh, the Memphis area and Shelby County as a whole was right at about, um, I wanna say 78%. Wait a minute, I grabbed the wrong chart. Okay, so everyone was about 78%, correct. And so uh, black breastfeeding rates were um, at about 58%. And so um, the local coalition, the Shelby County Breastfeeding Coalition, realized that although they're doing tremendous great work, that there was a need for there to be a concentrated effort for women of color uh, in breastfeeding, uh, because you know not only that we're trying to improve all breastfeeding rates, but we they definitely uh, saw the disparity in, in the rates. Um, so uh, Rose uh, um, partnered with uh, the Shelby County Breastfeeding Coalition, and Rose stands for Reaching Our Sisters Everywhere. They are a national black breastfeeding organization located in Georgia. Um, to be to act as a balancing agent, if you will, um, to the work that we were trying to get together. At the time, I uh, was a breastfeeding peer counselor. I've been a, a peer counselor since my uh, oldest. I have four children. Uh, they all breastfed till they were three. Uh, my oldest is 21. Um, so I've been a peer counselor since he was one. Um, and at that time, we were living in uh, Northampton, Massachusetts. Uh, but uh, Memphis had uh, got their peer counselor program in 2012, and I followed that and was really super excited. You know, you're always a peer counselor, regardless of if you're truly working in the position or not. And so when the city finally got their uh, peer counseling um, program, um, I applied and uh, became a peer counselor in 2014. Um, so, um, well, I was a peer counselor at the Shelby County Health Department, and so, and I'm an active member of the local uh, coalition, and so uh, brought the partnered uh, coalition and roles to the health department to see if they would be interested in doing a, a three-way partnership, because of course, uh, our health department has to be involved in this, uh, in these endeavors. And they were excited about it, had to figure it out. You know, of course, there's a lot of extra red tape, you know, for health departments. Uh, but out of this uh, partnership came uh, B-STARS, Breastfeeding Sisters that are receiving support. So as you all see on you all screen, um, uh, uh, the the uh, picture before um, in the left hand top corner was our first meeting and uh, we decided that we were going to uh, do a monthly uh, meeting of support. The health department allowed us to meet in a space of theirs for free and um, we had 39 people at our first meeting and the uh, one of the other things that made our group special is it wasn't just for WIC participants, it was for any women of color, and of course anyone could come, of course, but uh, women of color, um, um, and it didn't matter what uh, socioeconomics, you know, the, uh, the mother was, you know, it's just, you know, black moms need to get together. We need to love on each other, support and educate each other uh, and, and try and help increase our breastfeeding rates and the longer duration. So amongst these 39 women, we had an attorney there. We had a uh, labor and delivery nurse. Um, uh, members of the black, uh, black birth workers community, lay women, uh, WIC participants. It was a, just a wonderful group and their children. Um, our meeting is at six o'clock PM. And so uh, we decided of course, with the demographics and that we were trying to reach that uh, if we um, had a light dinner prepared, um, it would make it a lot easier for them to attend as well, because of course, six o'clock is dinner time. And if a mom has to choose either to go home to make dinner or to a breastfeeding support meeting, they're going home to cook. So we wanted to make sure that they uh, could uh, bring their children and um, get the love and support and education that they needed. Um, and, and also in this mix, I wanted to say there were IBCLCs, I am a CLC, as well as peer counselors and then other breastfeeding support um, uh, people as well. Um, so from there, we uh, 
everyone was excited. It was like, okay, you know what, now what? Um, so from day one, we have been acting and walking as uh, that we were going to become a self-sustaining community organization, truly led by our members. And so um, there have been, um, uh, we have done uh, promotions in terms of uh, creating uh, positive black images of women breastfeeding. Rose was uh, very helpful with that. You saw a couple of images of some of the uh, photo shoots we, we have done. We have done three at this point. Excuse my background view, that's my son. Um, uh, and so those in themselves were empowering. They are our members um, who um, felt comfortable enough to be able to uh, do the photo shoots with us. We did one at the launch of B-Stars. We did another one about a year and a half ago uh, because we hopefully soon will be having it exhibited in a art gallery here in Memphis in a uh, black community. Um, and, you know, truly have the gala opening night event, um, have the images on the wall, just, you know, just really empowering our moms to uh, uh, continue to breastfeed, see that it's beautiful. Uh, it was really, I would like to note that when we did our uh, meeting, um, our, 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 our first meeting uh, before we did the photo shoot, we had a lot of dads come. And um, um, let's see, I, I would say that there were at least 25 people in the room. And, um, you know, the dads were just, you know, concerned about, you know, how they're, how, because some of the pictures do have dads in it as well, but, you know, uh, how their uh, uh, partners would be uh, portrayed in these pictures, you know, you know, how much would be showing. Um, you could just really see the support, but concern. Um, of you know this, this the family makeup and it was just wonderful it turned even though we were talking about the photo shoot it turned into a big old you know breastfeeding support group uh, a lot of the moms are talking about issues that they're having going back to work or not producing enough milk so just in any time that we're able to just get together it just organically turns into this um com conversation of love and support and although it is uh lactation uh professional led, it's not driven so that the conversation is organic um, from its members. Sometimes they're able to support and help each other. And then if you, you know, of course, you know, we're there for that extra layer of, of uh, breastfeeding education um, as needed also. Um, I, um, we usually for our monthly meetings, we have a topic around breastfeeding and um, family support, and then we have our, our true education uh, piece, and then questions and answers, and we have our dinner. And so some of our topics um, have been um, uh, baby blues and, um, um, and depression, which is uh, a topic that uh, doesn't get discussed very much in the Black community. So we would have a, a professional come in to talk to us about that, and that has been very well attended. Um, another uh, topic has been on smoking um, and pregnancy and breastfeeding. Um, let's see, for May, we do our mother's uh, meeting. So, of course, when people, when, when you know, of course, uh, us as moms, uh, when we have babies, uh, uh, all the attention are on our children. So for our mother's meeting, we talk about the mother's experience. Uh, how was their birth experience and how are they doing? So we love on our moms and then we still have that uh, breastfeeding education and support. For June, we have our dad's meeting where we love on them. So uh, people bring their partners um, and they talk about their experiences. And um, oh my goodness, we just have a really good time. I was trying to think back of some of the uh, comments made uh, last June. Uh, um, a lot, like a, quite a few dads got into this discussion of how the baby, you know, they, oh, everybody's big on skin to skin now. So, uh, or getting there. And um, so, you know, baby was doing skin to skin and they tried to latch on to the dad. And so then a couple other dads like, you, that happened to you too? And it was just so funny. Um, but, you know, they just, it, it was neat to, to, for them to hear each other's experiences, you know, uh, 
and, and find common places. A uh, couple dads, you know, had concerns. Some dads were about to become dads. Um, so they had their, their own unique questions and just hear them talk amongst themselves. It's just, it was just really wonderful. And here it is, we're, we're, this is of course all around breastfeeding, but yet we have, uh, you know, dads and, and other family members uh, getting involved. Oh, also for our moms um, uh, meeting, grandmothers and um, support people come at any time and grandmothers usually come at any time but we also love on our grandmothers quite a few of our grandmothers and great grandmothers did not breastfeed and so as we go around the room and we do our icebreaker of how long did you breastfeed and you know all that you know some of them will say I didn't and so we all always um, still love on them of course and know that you know uh, when we know better, we do better, and that we know that we have come through some uh, different phases of growing in our in our families. And so here it is, they may have not breastfed, but look, you know, look now, now you know differently, and now you're encouraging your daughter, your granddaughter to breastfeed. So, uh, uh, you know, just uh, in that healing uh, through families um, has been very empowering as well. Um, this past April, um, in Memphis was the, um, the, um, it wasn't necessary. It was not the celebration, but just the remembrance of Martin Luther King. And it has been 50 years since he's been assassinated. And so there was a, a, a lot of events in Memphis uh, throughout April um, that were happening. And so we had a civil rights era mother who was in her 80s come in and this, oh, so what we did is, if, you, if you'll follow me, we tied in our uh, baby blues and depression meeting um, into um, comparing how it is to raise children now uh, as a, a black family into how it was raising uh, a ch uh, children back in civil rights era time, you know, when Dr. Martin Luther King was here. And so just, you know, just seeing some of how that affects um, our, our mental health. Um, so the civil rights mom came in and talked to us about, um, she actually worked at the hospital that Dr. King was brought to before he uh, passed. And um, they had shut down parts of Memphis because they were so afraid that people were going to riot that um, they shut down parts of Memphis. So as she uh, came home, she could not find her children. You know, it was just really traumatic. Um, so, you know, we, we talked about, you know, that whole situation. Of course, she did go on to find them. She breastfed and felt that, um, you know, a lot, and she was a young mother at the, at, um, um, in her start, um, and a lot of her peers breastfed as well. So we even talked about that because sometimes we don't hear about moms breastfeeding through those 50s and 60s. Um, but she she breastfed so we 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 loved on her and she loved on us back and uh, one of the children who were paying very close attention to her she was telling her story um as she uh finished and asked if there was any questions um a an eight-year-old in the crowd raised his hand it was like you know was life back then a lot harder than it is now you know so just it was just nice to just you know she answered you know on his level and um but it was just nice to see that you know uh, even the children were paying attention. Um, one of every now and again, if a topic cancels or there's a gap in our um, uh, in what we're going to do for that month meeting, it becomes a strategic planning meeting. So that way, our uh, core members, core members are people who support even as their children get older, um, and they still come. Um, and then and then those who come and go as well, they know that. Uh, hey, this is our strategic planning meeting. Let us figure out what you want to do. What way do you want to move this organization? What are we doing or not doing that you all need? Um, so some of the ideas have been to, you know, it's like, you know, the meeting is great, but it'd be nice to just chill out or hang out with some members, um, some uh, moms and families. Uh, let's do a barbecue. So we've done a barbecue um, in a, a park. Um, we've also, uh, for our um anniversary, uh, B-Stars is now three years old, we uh, have done a pool party for the last two years. So of course we had to flesh out safely how to do that. Um, so we go to a local community center um, that has four lifeguards and, um, you, know, uh, you know, we have uh, breastfeeding bracelets of different bright colors 
so that we know a certain color. Uh, they have a, a a true pool and then a waiting pool that's wonderfully large and and uh, great. But uh, our children, according to if they can swim or not, will have a different color bracelet on, and the uh, people sign a waiver. But you know, just we had to we had to flesh it out. But we did it, and uh, members felt. Uh, um, like, you know, we're listening, you know, and so it's, it's always good to uh, have them feeling like that. Another thing that uh, we talked about um, is um, having a 3K walk for Black Breastfeeding Week. So uh, we got that together, organized it, and as y'all see in the lower uh, right-hand picture, one of our sponsors was Hooters. And so it was so funny when we decided to, you know, ask them because, you know, it's like, what? You know, OK, that would be so cool. The, our location in which we do our 3K route um, is downtown Memphis. So we walk down Beale and the surrounding areas and Hooters is one of the uh, corners of where we turn. So, you know, it was, you know, it was going to be perfect if it was, if it was going to work. So we reached out to them and the manager a woman was like, uh, oh yeah, we got to be involved in this. So it was so exciting and so neat at the same time that they have been our four-year sponsor. They do a, a true water stop for us and the girls come on out. And um, one of them was a, a, a breastfeeding mom herself. So that was cool on top of cool. And um, so, you know, just, just different unique partnerships and networking opportunities. Um, there were a lot of other businesses along the way that sponsored us downtown as well. There's Wet Willies that sponsored us. And in fact, in having these conversations, it allowed us to now know uh, businesses that support breastfeeding. And so with Wet Willies, the uh, owner actually showed me a letter that she had sent out a long time ago to her uh, employees because a mom had come into breastfeed and someone had made a, 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 some, um, a, a flunk about it. And she was like, hey, no, 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 we support this. And if you feel a certain kind of way, you know, um, and it's the law and all this. And so it was great to see that she had done that even before any of this, but uh, also was excited and wanted to support us in this 3K walk and this effort. Um, so yes, this, this and thank you, Kinkini. So this, uh, these four pictures, the left picture was our first meeting. And um, let's see, just, uh, and then um, our, for our dad's day last June was our the, the upper right. And um, then the, the lower left is one of our photo shoot pictures. And um, and I you know and I love the I love how this the the last one um, um, they're all beautiful in their own ways. And I love the different dynamics of this photo shoot. Some of our, our ladies have tattoos, you know, just, just other, just certain things that people cannot kind of identify with. The lady in the peach, the second from the right, she actually has a star on her shoulder. So we took a couple pictures with her really close up breastfeeding, you know, for B stars and all that. But uh, we thought that was pretty neat and uh, special. Um, Let's see, some other things. So um, how does this tie into state work? So, um, oh, for other, the background noise. Someone? Yeah. Yeah, can you, uh, is there, uh, do you hear some background noise now? If, if folks wanted to just mute their lines so that we'd have no signal at the back. But, um Thank you, Tiana. And this is really, uh, we've had so many questions from our state teams, Tiana, about community engagement and how do we, how do we right. reach out to communities of color or communities that are generally hard to reach in rural. And I feel like BSTAS really embodies that richness of having something that's driven by the community and mm -hmm. that where these partnerships are so unique, like we can be so stuffy at times about who we partner with, who would have thought that, you know, when you, when you're thinking about um, incorporating so many elements in your support group, it's not isolated to breastfeeding. Breastfeeding happens mm -hmm. in context. So you're teaching, you know, healthy eating, you're walking. So incorporating, fun activities, physical activity through your meetings, parenting, building community, just so many rich ways in which, um, in the context of which um, breastfeeding is being supported, but completely owned and driven 
uh, by your members, and that's so remarkable. Right, right. thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I promise it's not much longer. Um, one of our other um, uh, meetings, we uh, partnered with a step ahead. So they talked about birth control. And um, and actually, the, with the first time that they came and talked to us, um, they did not realize that there are certain birth controls that can decrease your milk. So we actually helped to educate them. And they, they took some of that information back to their uh, team. So um, they have been coming. And, and we have a, a meeting about or uh, long-term reversible birth control and just different options. Um, so yeah, just, uh, yeah, and uh, Kinkini, you talked about healthy eating. Um, for our March meeting um, for the National Nutrition Month, um, when we were partnered with the health department, um, uh, they would have a nutritionist come and talk to us about healthy eating. Uh, this last March, we had a um, an, a registered dietitian come who actually owns a uh, a vegan restaurant and we had a vegan meal together and for a lot of our moms that was their first time ever having a vegan meal um and so you know yeah once again you know, you were talking about breastfeeding but it does impact so much more um you know and it's almost covertly um but you know even just the empowerment of how our women perceive us and support us um there's just so many and, and our children um uh, there's just so many different dynamics so getting into b stars and the state coalition um my work at uh the local level um i started to get involved uh more especially being between being a peer counselor and then involved in the local coalition the state um um, had a coalition that uh, needed some uh, to be reorganized. And uh, we had heard about it, uh, but nothing really was uh, uh, really going on. They had some work groups that were meeting faithfully, but nothing that's really sparked, re-sparked the, the true state coalition. And so I was asked to um, help them um, to get that together. So last uh, March, we attended the Tennessee perinatal quality of care, we call it the TIPQC meeting. Um, and although breastfeeding is touched upon in different ways, it's not necessarily the, the driving point, but uh, the work group met as one of their breakout sessions. And so I was tasked by the state breastfeeding coordinator uh, to see if we could really truly, um, oh, what, what was that? Huh? Oh, my apologies. Uh, I, you know, it's a still winter break. So my children are like, hey, what are you doing? Um, yeah, I'm doing a, a presentation. Oh, really? Yes, just me. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was tasked to see if the work group could truly become the Tennessee Breastfeeding Coalition and work from there. And so uh, they introduced me. A lot of them already knew our work. Um, I did a presentation on what we were doing at our local level. And so by the time our breakout session was done, we had, you know, we had uh, got ourselves together and said, yes, we, we, we need to get this together and, um, and be um, re-energize the Tennessee Breastfeeding Coalition. So uh, we've been working on that for the last year and a half. Um, um, one of our initiatives, uh, what I, what, what I, Come, what I'd come to, to learn, especially working with moms in the uh, health department clinic, is that a lot of um, um, our health care providers were not listening to them in terms of uh, them wanting to breastfeed. Um, and um, although it was a predominantly Black families that, that felt that way, um, as you know, peer counselors, as we ask our questions of our clients, um, you know, um, so have you decided, you know, how you're going to feed your baby? Um, has your doctor had a conversation with you about breastfeeding? A lot of them were saying no. And it's like, ah, eh, no, because of course we, we, we think our doctor's word is law. And so if they're not saying these things to us, then, um, you know, it makes it hard to follow up on that conversation when there has not been a conversation. So, um, the uh, we decided that uh, there was a need for an event for um, healthcare providers to be able to have a safe space in which they could learn more about the importance of breastfeeding, but also how to approach their clients about it. Um, and then also, you know, 
uh, network within each other because of course you only see your doctor a few times but if you know some other resources that would be very powerful so um i went and talked to the mayor and uh we have two mayors we have a, sh uh, a county mayor and a city mayor um city mayor was not necessary he was he was open but not as excited but the county mayor he was excited about it he actually uh said let me see when my schedule is clear. Um, I want to, you know, I want us to, I want to host this, you know, for the, as a city event. So I took that energy and that date to the coalition and the health department, which uh, before um, the mayor got involved, they were a little apprehensive because of course, you know, cost and, and all that. Um, but, you know, when you get a mayor on your side, um, a lot more happens. So, um, I had gone to a, a Rose event that was in Mississippi that um, helped with this idea as well. They had something similar uh, uh, um, in a small part of Mississippi and they invited me down um, because at this point I'm kind of the ambassador for Rose for Memphis, but I hadn't really seen um, some of their work firsthand, just busy, you know, doing what we're doing in Memphis. So um, was able to see that and it was a great one day event. Um, and so it was like, yeah, we need something like that here in Memphis. So the Memphis Area Breastfeeding Symposium happened uh, for the first year, uh, June 2016. We had 160 attendees, and um, it was at and and my th my thing about this was because you know we're, of course we're trying to figure out cost and and how this is going to work. Um, you know, some people were feeling like, let's just have it at the library and we'll have box lunches. And it was like, no, this needs to be just as important uh, of a conference as, you know, uh, something on uh, hypertension or uh, diabetes and all these things. Um, so we need to make sure that people see the importance of this and also know that, um, you know, and 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 have and have a, a a good time, if you will, uh, learning this information. So uh, we uh, used the Holiday Inn at the University of Memphis. Uh, they gave us a wonderful deal, and um, there were vendor tables and uh, a, a beautiful uh, lunch. And the event was free to everyone uh, for healthcare providers. Um, I had state level help. Uh, the Office of Minority Affairs helped to write a, a very generous grant uh, so that we were able to uh, focus on disparities and, and that uh, aspect of it. So we started our day with the state coming in with their uh, breastfeeding rates and uh, stat statistics. Then we had the local level health department talk about uh, our area to focus us for the day. And then we went from there. Um, and then the end of our day, we had a round table discussion where people would break off into their professions. So we had nutritionists, uh, a, few uh, a few doctors, uh, midwives, uh, doulas, uh, peer counselors and other uh, professions as well. We broke off and we had a few questions for them to answer and then they reported back. We did a Twitter party for lunch. Um, it was a very full day and I'm sure that one day it might become a two day symposium. Uh, what uh, the Memphis Area Breastfeeding Symposium was uh, adopted, if you will, by the state. So now it is the Tennessee Breastfeeding Symposium and um, for the first two years we had it in Memphis last year in 2018, uh, we moved it uh, to Chattanooga. Um, we have the Appala uh, Appalachian um, network that, uh, breastfeeding network on that side of the state. Um, and there was a need for it to be there. The state wanted uh, to be able to move our energy around the state. I encouraged them though to, um, to see if they'd be willing to allow Memphis to host it every other year because Memphis still is our most fragile population. So they agreed. So now the Tennessee Breastfeeding Coalition sponsors it with the help of the local coalition of that area. Um, so uh, Chattanooga was, uh, you know, of course, uh, our transition year of it becoming the state uh, uh, symposium. And it, it was a little challenging in areas. Um, I think, uh, you know, and I was telling my uh, local uh, coalition yesterday, I think, um, in seeing me as a Black woman uh, coming into their coalition, although a few of them knew me, um, um, 
sometimes people, you know, they're like, well, who's this, who's this woman? And what is she asking us to do? We've heard about that, but I don't know. And it was like, no, I, you know, I, cause I'm coming from Memphis. Chattanooga is like six hours away, but um, I like to drive and I like to travel. And I'm like, look, you have me, it's templated. We just really need your energy here and make sure that we're needing the needs of your area here so that we can truly drive this for what you need. Um, I think in coming years, as we are building this momentum, we will definitely definitely have a lot better um, outcome. We, but we still had um, 143 people in Chattanooga. Um, oh, our second year in Memphis, we had two, 215. So we are building. Um, this year, it's, uh, in 2019, it will be back in, in, in Memphis. Um, and um, the coalition, of course, is excited. The local health department, they are partnered to help with some of the costs as well. And um, we just have to build upon it, but truly see some results. Um, it's great to talk about our statistics, statistics, excuse me, and our rates, but we need to truly start seeing some results behind this to truly justify to keep going about this. And of course, I know it's going to take some time, um, but I know uh, uh, community organizations like BSTARS, which they help support uh, the symposium with their core members. Uh, we help with the um, they have uh, like a silent auction. Uh, some BSTARS members help with that, as well as some other things um, around the edges of support. But um, like I said, it's going to take some time, but it has been really wonderful to be able to bridge local uh, momentum now with state and um, and uh, we're, we're still young, we're still growing, still trying to organize a few things, but the energy is there, the love, the support is there. And um, um, we, have, we have more to come. Oh, well, my right. husband, one more thing I wanted to say, we have a, uh, an annual baby shower. Um, this will be our, hmm, I think this is our fourth. Uh, it might be our, oh, good Lord, uh, February 2019 actually might be our fifth, but um, we have had up to 120 people there. Um, let's see, how many dads did we have? Um, like about 15 dads, uh, 35 children. Last year, Toys R Us was our sponsor, and oh my goodness, it was, a, what a blessing. I didn't realize, of course, they were going out of business, but uh, uh, they blessed us wonderfully, um, and the the baby shower is a health fair all around breastfeeding. So anybody who is a part of this has to be, you know, tie their their uh, trade into breastfeeding. And um, I loved one of the aspects of the baby shower where we were giving away some of the larger gifts, and some of the moms, you know, had already had a car seat or already had a stroller, and so they felt, you know what, I already have that, so I would like to bless someone else who doesn't. And so a lot of moms started, you know, networking within themselves of just making sure they that everyone had what they needed, and so everybody literally walked out with a trunk load of. Uh, uh, gifts for their baby and uh, uh, two earfuls of breastfeeding education and support. So uh, B stars, a star is born baby shower. Um, that has been one of our uh, wonderful things as well. Um, I know I'm missing a lot of stuff, but I at least wanted to get to up to quite a, a, you know a few things for you all. Um, uh, but so thank you very much for this time. Wow, thank you so much, Tiana. And Tiana's doing you know you can tell from her energy that. She's, you know, a leader's leader, not just how many followers she has, but just how many leaders she creates in this process of community uh, engagement and empowerment. So Michelle Obama is a follower of Beastars. So that's that's <laughs> quite quite a testimony right there when you have former first lady following you. But um, the model that Beastars uses is really something that would be amazing for other state coalitions or other county local coalitions to be using and how you can be. So we have um, a webinar that um, Tiana and Jada did, which is on our archives. We They've presented at the conference and Tiana, of course, is, um, you know, with the Rose Community Transformer training that um, they do is very, very good at uh, uh, sharing this with other state coalitions as well. So uh, questions, anyone has any questions for Tiana? Please feel free.
Well, thank you so much, uh, Tiana. This is true community engagement in, a, in an action, and it's really great that the state coalition, Tennessee, was grow, going through a hiatus and to actually have a local cultural county coalition come in and re-energize and um, rejuvenate it is also an ex extremely uh, you know, powerful example of how partnerships can work both ways. Uh, Jacqueline has a question. Jacqueline, let me just... Oh, okay. So that, yeah, go ahead. That, the community wanna... engagement training to share. Um, and Kinkini, thank you so much for mentioning that. Yeah, um, in this work, there have been core members who have wanted to make this uh, part of their profession. And so Rose does have a community transformer training. Uh, it's uh, it's almost a, a cultural peer counselor training. Um, and so we've offered that three times in Memphis, and we uh, just offered it for the first time in Nashville. Uh, so that is listed on Rose, Reaching Our Sisters Everywhere website. Um, also, we've had the opportunity to send a few people for the CLC uh, course training. Um, so people have actually, or and also doula trainings as well. So uh, people have actually grown in this work and empowered in this work to make it their own work um, as well. So that has been wonderful as, as also. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Deanna, again. And uh, just know that the model and the methods and the strategies and the partnerships that uh, Memphis has used, Shelby County and Tennessee, um, you know, Deanna can share that in more detail with uh, those of you who'd like to uh, connect with her. So I hope, Deanna, we can share your email. Sure, that's fine. I was trying to do it and hit the enter button. Sure, that, that's fine. Wonderful. Yeah. So, again, we have um, um, just a few minutes and we wanted to know, are there um, any state updates that uh, folks would like to share just in a minute or so? We look forward to seeing many of you in D.C. next week. But any updates uh, that Robbie, you'd like to share? Is Robbie on? Does she want to um, put in the thing for the California Summit? Um, sure. We have our California Breastfeeding Summit at the end of the month, January 29th through the 31st. If you go to our website, www.californiabreastfeeding.org, there's a link to the annual summit. And it's um, Think Global, Act Local, um, Support, Promote, and, and Protect Breastfeeding. And anyone is invited to come. Everyone's invited to come. Wonderful. Thank you, Robbie. It's also on the list that I have. So I'll go. Um, this is something that I'll email out with the recording right now. So we have... Um, a resource list that we always share at this uh, at the Children's Healthy Weight Coin with some important um, updates and things. So I have the C CBC Summit on there as well. Any other sharings? This is Marcy Brewer. I actually just um, wanted to pose a question or two to the group, if um, if I can do that. Please, go ahead, Marcy. So um, I, I am going to be um, doing a session uh, on, what, Tuesday at the, the COIN meeting in Bethesda, along with Jennifer Young from Oregon and um, two program managers and leads from AMCHIP. And we're going to be talking about or revisiting um, the models for improvement and, and quality improvement methods, including PDSA cycles. And we really want to make sure that this session is helpful um, to you. And we, so I just wanted to ask the group if anybody had any sort of um, burning um, questions or challenges or even successes um, in terms of running PDSA cycles and, um, you know, using quality improvement methods. Um, if you have time to share with me now, that would be great. I can also put my email address um, in uh, the chat, too, and we can connect that way. Um, 
Thank you, Marcy. Since we are all together and we have a few minutes, does folks have questions about their PDSA cycles that you'd like? Diane says she'll connect via email. Awesome. I, this is Christine, and I, I can just send a comment by email as well. Or awesome. a question. That would be, that'd be great. That would be really helpful. Um, we know there, there have been some, you know, sh struggles. We know that there have been some successes. Our goal for this session is to really, um, you know, use a, a teach all, all teach all learn approach and really facilitate some discussion and, and generate some good ideas for testing changes and, um, yeah, using, uh, PDSA cycles a bit more, refining our approach a bit. So. Hi, Marcy. Okay. This is Shana Meyer from Wisconsin. Hey. Our um, QI director, Ariana Kyle, will be joining us, um, joining our team in Bethesda next week. And she's been plugging our data into Life QI, which um, has some like PDSA cycle software and it makes some really cool graphs and charts and things. And so she is planning to bring that for us to look at as a group. And she would be happy to um, share that with you, too, if you wanted to take a peek at it. Um, yes, please. It sounds like she should be leaving the session. <laughs> Why is it? I feel like it's a little blind, like leading the blind a little bit. Like her and I, but we're really just, we are there as your peers to just help really pull out the collective knowledge that that's in the room already. So, um, well, yeah, that would be amazing. amazing. I was pretty happy when she agreed to join our core team. Oh my gosh. <laughs> heck yeah. Awesome. Well, maybe, um, I'll shoot you an email and then we can, we can connect that way. Okay. That sounds great. Thank, uh, you. thank you. This is, this is what all fear sharing and learning is all about. How exciting. <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, are there, um any specific TA needs that you have? Diane, as I'm thinking about Tiana over here, we know that fathers they um we can we we've been Tiana, we've been trying to collate some information about, you know, fathers and breastfeeding as well. So again, I'll um see um may I'll share your email so if there are connections to be made. But um we at at next week when we do have our uh, breastfeeding team breakout sessions, I'll be doing a little bit more about community engagement and how we will be working on some worksheets and assessing where we are on the community engagement scale. So that should be fun. But if there are other TA needs that you all specifically have for your projects, would you please send me an email and let me know so that then I could do some one-on-one -on -one support. Uh, the resource list that I just showed you is more general, um, uh, you know, basic principles and news and good resources that that's, uh, but not project specific to your project. So please, again, um, follow up email to Miriam and me, let us know how we can help you. Are there any things you want to surface now? Like, um, needs anyone else? We are on the hour. Um, did you, can Kenny, did you see Diane's question about will the meeting be available via the internet? Are you talking about the, on, the in person meeting, Diane? It, yes, we will be streaming the major sessions again. I'm going to send out the connection information and all the sessions that will be available later today. Fabulous. Okay, so we are three minutes past the hour. Is, is there anyone who has a burning desire to share that, you know, did not so we can take a couple minutes, otherwise we'll um, call it um, a day on this meeting. Anyone else? One last chance. Okay. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you, Tiana. Thank you to all the folks who made the time to be here today. Uh, I will send out the recording as well as the resource list to you today.
and please send me any questions you have about uh, individual um, support that you might need for your um, projects and look forward to seeing many of you next week in DC. Safe travels everyone and thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year everyone. Bye.